Welcome everybody back to the Nosebleeds podcast. I'm Chris Witt, and with me as always is Mr. Adam Schmidt. Adam, how are you today, sir? Perfect. Perfect. Just in time. Just <laughs> in time with the microphone and the headphones. Uh, so, uh, missed last week. Yeah. We're back today. Uh, this is, we're recording on Tuesday instead of Wednesday because we we're so excited to get back. Um, we've got playoff basketball getting to the championship round. Can you not hear like usual? No. That's all right. Okay. We got you fixed up here, but I got you fixed up. You can hear now. You can hear now. Can you hear now? Okay. <laughs> Leave the headphones off. Uh, technical difficulties. We'll get our producer right on that. Sure. Um, so uh, NBA playoffs, we're actually kind of watching the overtime uh, of the Pacers and Celtics in Boston. couple bad turnovers at the end of the first, end of the second half. Sorry. End of the fourth quarter to put this thing into overtime. And uh, I was at the PGA. I went to the PGA championship uh, twice. I got to go Thursday and a once in a lifetime opportunity to go to Sunday at a major tournament and, and got to see a, a, a putt to win Wow, a putt that, that needed to be, that had to be made to win. Uh, he makes it, he wins, he misses it's a, he goes to uh, playoff holes. Uh, Xander Shoffley, congratulations. Uh, fighting off a uh, phenomenal round from Bryson De- DeChambeau. Bryson DeChambeau. Um, so cool to watch these guys play golf. It's really unbelievable. Um, but the biggest thing is we've got Reese's back. That's right. That's right. We uh, I was in the store the other day and... I saw some, and so these are going to be one of those things where it's like, like what we what we saw with the footballs last year. It's like, uh-huh. what? yeah, that's just it's an Easter egg. Thing. It's yes. an Easter egg. It's the same thing. Oh yeah, okay. Shape. And these are uh, Reese's medals. Reese's medals because we have the Olympics coming up. So man, how cool is that? That we are, we are, we are going to be doing the podcast for our second Olympics. Yeah, isn't that pretty cool? Oh yeah, absolutely. so like it was just yesterday. We're talking about Simone Biles, and yeah, yeah. you know she's never gonna flip again. And sure enough, she's back. There she is. Look at that! Look, Look at, at the Easter yeah. bunny! Look at the Easter bunny! All right, can we can we all say this? Listen, we all love Reese's, and this is gonna be delicious. But can we just say Reese's? If you're gonna say you're making something and put a picture of it on the wrapper, make it look like what's on the wrapper. Look, there's like. On the wrapper on the, of the picture, it's like the chocolate is cut out. Yeah, to see the outline, and there's nothing. It's just a. It's a. This reminds me of a fist on a wrist. Yeah, and like it a remi- punching. You it, could make this a glove, like punching. It's it's a uh, 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 you know maybe some sort of lamp post. Uh, I mean it's a glob of chocolate. It's a glob of chocolate, uh, which I'm good with. Mm-hmm. It's going to be delicious. Of course. <laughs> it does not look good. Doesn't look like a medal at all. Nope. No, um, I, don't, I don't know who decided that was a medal, but they lost. <laughs> um. So as far as shape goes, bronze medal for this. Um, taste? Taste, I'll give it a gold. How about platinum? What's yeah. above gold? Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's... Just like all the others, the more peanut butter than a normal Reese's, mm-hmm. which is always better. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. Um, that's why they sell so many big cups now. Yeah, yeah, because so, the big cup is the best. I'm eating this so much that I'm I'm heavy breathing into the microphone. <laughs> that's fat guy right there, bud. Well. That's understandable. Um, so, all right, I'm eating, I both, mean, of, I'm eating both of them. Yeah, I might, that. I might save mine for the uh, my other one for the trip home. Uh huh. A little midnight snack. There you go. Good on you. Uh, the mm, it, without taking points away for the shape nine eight. Oh yeah, nine nine. Yeah. Yep. Okay. If I take points away for the shape, 
nine four. <laughs> I was gonna say like one six. No, <laughs> you take a lot of points. Out of <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'm I'm right there. I'm right there. It's 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 unbelievable. It's just funny that they call it a medal. You expect better from you expect um just a higher standard, really, from Reese's. Yeah, if, it's if, it's really the taste is there for the sure. The taste but. is amazing, but if you're gonna call it a medal, then make it a medal. Make it a medal. You know, there's if you're gonna call it a football, make it a football. Yeah. At least make it look like what you're advertising it. You can't just be kind of oval shaped and call it a football. Mm-mm. I mean, no. Anyway, all right. Well, still good. Ooh, I gotta get my breath back from from eating. From eating a candy, mm-hmm. huh? All right. Eating a candy. Have yourself a have yourself a water and uh and uh grape we'll, we'll crystal light in that water today. Oh a little grape crystal light. Nice. Mm-hmm. So does it taste like Kool-Aid? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Um so uh that was delicious. Thank you. Uh, so I got a story for you. Okay. So I went to the masters, uh, got to go twice. Um, and we'll get into both days cause both things are, you went to the masters and then you went to the, sorry. Uh, I went to the PGA, the PGA championship at Valhalla on Thursday, uh, with work. And then I, uh, a buddy of mine won tickets to Sunday at Valhalla. It was his, uh, Sunday was his stroke anniversary. He had oh, a yeah, stroke yeah. Yeah. Um, God, seven years ago now. Wow. S- Was it that long? Six years ago, maybe. It doesn't seem that it long. It doesn't but seem that long ago, right. but it's pretty close. Maybe five years. I don't know. Somewhere in there. Um, so it's his stroke anniversary. It is also my wife's birthday on the same day. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I, and I went, I went. I went to the to the tournament with him. We had a good time. We golfed the day before nice. at Shelbyville Country Club, which was really nice. Um, and we went to the, you know, got to go to the game or go to the, I'm watching the game. I'm, it's so hard not to watch this basketball game. It's in overtime right now. And Halliburton's on the line. They're down. Or they're, it's He just tied it, and he's going to get two more free throws because uh, they just fouled him taking a three. I, I can only do one or the other. I'm mm-hmm. I'm pretty much not going to see this game, or I will be totally like I just did and start talking about something else. <laughs> um. All right, so I'm not going to watch it. So let's uh, let Sunday was amazing. We walked the course. We uh, followed some really great players. We got to see so many guys. We saw Scotty Scheffler. We saw DeChambeau, and they're all right next to you, and they just walk by you on the bri- on this one bridge. You can reach out and touch them. It's I mean, they're just golfers. Did you see Tigger's Woods? No, no, he didn't make the cut. Oh, he didn't make the cut? Mm-mm. He didn't for Sunday. Now, oh. Thursday we tried to, but you couldn't get close to him. The amount of people was insane. How many people were watching him on Thursday? So, uh, Thursday. Yeah. I'm going to give you a little story. Let's hear it. I want to know if anything like this has ever happened to you, what you would have done in the situation, and uh, uh, go from here. So. When you hang out with my work, right? It's almost all there. You're going to have a story by the time it's all said and done. Okay. okay? Something, something's going to happen. All right. We're going to have a story. Anytime there's an outing that's got all of us together, we've always got a story for life. So, so Thursday you were there with work. People. That was with work. So, uh, our vendor mm-hmm. asked us, uh, if we wanted to bring some people, they had 10 tickets, nine tickets. I think it was nine. Anyway, so there's three of them, okay? Um, another salesman like myself went. I went. He brought a guy. So that's three, four, five, six. Uh, we had another guy from work go from in our, our inside the office and two of my customers. Okay, that's nine, I think. Yep. So I am, you know, showing a couple of my customers a good time. My vendor is going to take all of us out. We're going to have a good time. Good. So they say meet at our Airbnb at 10 a.m. Me. So our our Airbnb is you and who? No, not mine. Yeah. Theirs. They oh. told me to meet it. They told me to meet at their Airbnb. They would get some Ubers. We'd head out, go to the course, be in there by probably, 
you know, 11 o'clock at the latest, hopefully, and get to watch a lot of golf that day. Mm -hmm. First round, um, not a practice round like I did at Augusta. It was an actual round of golf, which is kind of cool. So I got these two guys come down with me. These uh, young, young Kentucky boys, two of my favorite customers. Uh, and we rolled, you know, pick them up early. You know, I got cocktails waiting for them in the back of the truck. You know, I'm always making sure everybody's ready to have a good time. We 10, get 10 a.m. Is that what this is? Yeah, no, okay. I pick them up at 7 30 a.m. to get to Louisville by 8 a.m. Okay. Hey, listen, I'm a good host. Okay. Is, I'm not. I'm okay. not having cocktails. <laughs> okay. I'm not having cocktails. I know the people that I'm with. I gotcha. So they're going to want to have a, 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 a beverage on the way down. I'll make sure there's no, one available. No judgment. No judgment. All right. Yeah. Totally good dudes. This has nothing to do with them. And it has nothing to do with that story either. <laughs> so get down there and we get to the Airbnb where these guys, we're going to call them, uh, we're going to call them exterior trim uh, company. Okay. And uh, I have a cousin that does that. I think we'll just call them trim. We'll just call them. We'll just call them the other company. <laughs> the other company comes uh, one of the guys from them who uh, comes out to me out as soon as I pull in and goes, well, the guy who bought the tickets, bought them on a third party site, and he got them two months ago and never checked. He doesn't have tickets. Oh, yeah. This is PGA Championship. This is one of four majors in the entire year. Like, these are not easy tickets to come by. So they're sold out. You can't buy tickets. Okay. Um, and so, or you, you, well, you can't go up to like the booth and buy a ticket. Right. So, the head honcho for this other company is there and he's pissed because his, the guy that's under him was supposed to take care of this. Didn't take care of it. That dude is like, he is, he looks like somebody killed his dog. He <laughs> looks so bad. Oh my God. It was rough. I felt bad for him. The other guy goes, oh, I just jumped on this other site. I got, I just got our tickets. Uh, I should have them by the time we get to the golf course. So we jump in two different Ubers. I got my dudes, right? I got four. We I have four. I had four total people with me in my truck on the way down. Yeah. In the Uber, it's the four of us plus the guy who originally bought the tickets. Get there, and Uber in front of us gets out. We get out, and he goes, "They still haven't sent me the tickets in the email." The other guy, the the guy who bought them a second time. The second time still has not got the tickets. He's on the phone with Barbara and, and Louise and, and Jill and Jack and everybody else trying to get tickets. So he's like, they said, I'll have them in 12 minutes. Let's walk to the front. I'll have, she said, I'll have them within 15 minutes, walk to the front and uh, I'll have them by the time we get to the door. Okay. Right now That's I amazing. got these two smart ass young whippersnappers that I love to death and I'm thinking all the same things they're saying out loud, right? <laughs> like, how do you not have these tickets? You're supposed to be here taking these people. And you went on like vivid seats. That sounds like a porn site. <laughs> so I've heard vivid seats uh, advertised plenty. All right. So the other one, I can't remember the original one was uh, Seat Geek, maybe. Nope. No, it wasn't Seat Geek. It was something different, uh, but it wasn't Seat Geek. So we get there to the front, obviously, no, no tickets. These two are on the phone calling their their everybody they can call for these places. My buddy, the guy, my customer, looks at me. He's on his phone and he pulls his wallet out. And I said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! What are you doing, bud?" He goes, "I'm getting in here." I said, "Oh yeah, we're getting in. Like I'm, I promise you, we'll get in. I, I'll figure out a way. Maybe not all these rum dums, but we're gonna get in." <laughs> yeah. And he's like, and "It says I can get tickets right here. Go to the PGA." championship app where there's qr codes all around this place which is if you're buying tickets to the pga championship two months in advance maybe that'd be a good place to go <laughs> get on get on the app press tickets and it says you can buy up to four tickets at a time i thought it was sold out it is sold out okay. but they have a deal with seat geek okay so it so I walk over and I'm like, and he go, and the one my customer goes, you gonna what are you what are you gonna do? You gonna go over there? And you just gonna buy them? We just gonna walk in? Or I was like, I'm gonna go let them know that if I were to buy tickets, 
to something, I would go to their website and try to buy the tickets. So I walk over. I said, hey, surprise, surprise, fellas. I went to the PGA Championship app and I got four tickets. And he goes, you can get them. You go ahead and buy them. So I buy them and it brings up SeatGeek. And the guy goes, oh, here we go again. And I went, no. Within seconds, one, two, three, four. I said, just because you guys go to porn sites like Vivid Seats <laughs> to get yours, I went to the actual website for this place and bought them. So we got, I got four. I turn around and I, and he goes, well, let's make sure the customers get in talking about the other guy from India. And I said, I'll take the four guys in my truck. Cause the way you guys are ordering tickets, you may not make it in here. <laughs> so I took the other three guys in the truck with me that came down with me. The four of us went in and we had a good old time. Didn't see him for about four hours. Not the, we, the guys I was, I was with, they're like, we want to walk the course. We want to see the whole course. And if we don't, we wait with these guys, there's going to be two hours that we get to watch of golf. Yeah. So we watched, we went, did the whole course, sat up at 18, watched some people finish the, and they did make it in. They did make it in. Okay. It took them an hour and a half after I bought those tickets to figure out how to download the PGA championship app. And buy those tickets. And it took you like 30 seconds. Every bit of 30 seconds. <laughs> and I walked away from them too. I'm like, I can't do this with you guys. So they call us and we did meet up with them for a brief second. And, uh, you know, they're buying, they're supposed to buy all our drinks and everything, right? Like that's what it goes. We finally meet up with them and the one guy goes, hey, I'm going to get a beer. Anybody want anything? And we're like, sure. He comes back and he didn't bring anybody a drink. So I was like, you guys want to just I'm bolting from these guys. So I was just buying drinks the whole time. I'm turning all my receipts into them, but I'm like, we got, I can't even stand by these people. I'm going to get so mouthy that somebody's going to get upset. Okay. I got to leave because these guys are the biggest bunch of rum dumbs I've ever been around. <laughs> so we, they say we're leaving. They call us and say, we're leaving. There's four groups still out on the course. We got here late. Didn't get to see that much golf. I was like, well, the four of us are waiting. We'll get our own. Uber. Well, we'll figure it out. Yeah. We watched the whole, all that we could. It's the, like, how often do you get to go to something like this? That's what you're there for. Yeah. I've never been to one in 40 years. I mean, I'm lucky I've got to go to two now, but 40 years, I've tried to get tickets to these things and I've never been able to do it. Mm -hmm. So we stayed and watched the whole thing and we take an Uber back. They're getting dinner ready. <laughs> the second I walked in. That's just crazy. I don't know how that happened. I'm just, I, just, I said, it's crazy. I said, what's crazy is that you didn't go to the website for the tickets that you wanted to buy. I was so irritated. Could it have been that they thought even, even two months ago that they thought it's sold out. That's I get can't that. even be. I get that. I totally get that. And they didn't know that. But well, once you thing. can't get the tickets, mm -hmm. right. And they don't work. First place doesn't work. Second place doesn't work. Why aren't you like just randomly decided to look on, on the app and it's right at the bottom. It says tickets. And if you press it, it tells you oh, there's tons of tickets available. Mm. It's, it's just a very simple thing. <laughs> yeah. It's a very simple thing. Mm. And so here's my question for you. You've got your, you are entertaining a couple people. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> And you're told by somebody that they're getting something for you and you're going to, you, they are actually entertaining all of you, but you're, you have people that you're in charge of, right? Like that. You're like, we're going to have a good time, dude. We're going to go. It's going to be a good time. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden there's no seats. There's no, we don't have tickets. How would you have handled the situation? Because I'm feeling embarrassed that I got these two dudes with me and they're like, geez, Pete, these guys can't even, they can't even do a work trip, right? Like, you, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. If you are entertaining people that you have uh, business relationships with and you're relying on somebody else that you have a business relationship to, to yeah. take care of that, that's tough. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I, I, uh, I, I'm too much of a planner, I think to let that happen but but how but you don't as far they said we got nine tickets i i have no idea as far as i'm concerned cool we're going of course yeah well i'm not asking this dude for my ticket in advance 
Right. Right. And I, I for him, I would, I want to say for him to never check um, that yeah. the tickets were there. That's 100%. That's the mistake. But I kind of did that recently. Really? I, so this is even better. So the, I don't know if it's better. The, uh, the Reds every year have a high school showcase. Yeah. Uh, yeah future yeah. showcase. Yep. And some of the games are down at Great American Ballpark yep. over a weekend or whatever. And so there were a couple games, and and my my one cousin uh, is the head coach at a uh, for a high school, and he's his team was playing down there, and so I bought tickets, you know, uh, three four weeks ahead of time because you buy tickets and tell them what school you're buying for, and some of the money goes to their school, right? So we did that, I did that, and I bought I just bought four tickets. Just because I'm like, wow, well, basically I'm making a donation. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, and then you get you get the tickets, and then you also get four tickets to a Reds game. Oh, that's cool. Those. So good yeah. deal, right? So I get the tickets. I get the email originally, and I see it. And there's not a – it doesn't look like there's a, a, a thing for QR tickets. QR code or whatever. It just looked like it was – and I thought, well, maybe this is different because it's just the high school showcase mm -hmm. and – you know, there's the ballpark holds 42,000. You're going to have maybe a hundred people there, you okay. know, yeah. <laughs> 200 people there or something. Um, so they're not worried about that maybe, but I, and I didn't really think too much about it. So we get, we go down to the ballpark to go in and I pull the, the thing and I'm like, I'm like, okay, this does seem weird because mm -hmm. everything, everybody uses, but you know, high school, they use the QR codes and everything now to get in and, and, so I pull up the email and I'm looking at it and I'm like, huh, this does seem kind of weird. So we go up to the gate and I'm like, is this the, like, the, is the email just the ticket? And they're like, oh, I, I no, there should be something to scan. They said, go to the ticket office. The ticket office is open. So I go over there and I'm like, you know, I, I don't like, I got, this is the email. I show him the email. Mm -hmm. He's like, he's like, uh, check the ballpark app. So they send them to the ballpark app, the MLB. Ballpark. Oh yeah. The way you got to do tickets. Yeah. Right. And so, so what I, what I realized was at the very bottom of the email that I got when I made, when I purchased the tickets, it said something about the ballpark app, but it looked to me like just an advertisement for the ballpark app. Yeah. And I, I did, I just didn't pay attention close enough. So, so you, but you still had the tickets. I had the tickets. In they the were in the ballpark app. app. Right. Adam, it's not the same thing. Dad. <laughs> you just well, said I did kind of the same thing. That's zero percent. The same thing is never even if is not having the ticket. I didn't, I didn't pay close enough attention. Like they're I like should just see the QR code and right. make sure they're there. Yeah. yeah. You so, also I'm... were going 11 minutes away to a high school baseball <laughs> game. Yeah. Not not two hours not, away. This dude, this dude was coming from Michigan. Ooh. There was another dude from uh Pennsylvania from, from Pittsburgh. Yeesh. There's a dude from Indy. There was, you know, we were from all over. So when you got, you know, multiple hours of trips to the the you know, probably the fourth biggest major, but still the you still. know, still one of the top four events. The biggest in golfers golf. in the world are golfing. Too. One of the biggest events, all the best are at that to win it. Yeah. All the live guys are there. Everybody's oh, there. Wow. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. And I'm, I'm, I'm a tough guy when you do something dumb. I'm a tough guy to be around. <laughs> it's like in a situation like that. Yeah. It depends on who you are, right? Like I'm not going to be in an absolute butthole to everybody, but there are certain times and certain situations where certain people can be kind of cocky about who they are a lot and this yeah. guy might just be one of those kind of people ah. so this was like the greatest opportunity both of them actually the both people that messed up both might be two of the cockiest most arrogant people i've ever met in my life yeah so it's it's a lot one guy i won't travel with when he comes into town i tell him you're, you're not coming with me because of the way you talk to my customers i won't, I won't wow. bring you in here wow yeah. so uh yeah yeah the just absolute ridiculousness absolutely ridiculous and my boss was at the house when we got back there and he's just happy go lucky and i'm like i'm irritated as i'll get out again i wasn't irritated i had a great time at the course Good. me I, me and those dudes we had so much fun there but then i got back around those guys again and i'm like i'm irritated again <laughs> i'm super irritated right now so i started running my mouth just a little bit not as much as i probably could have or should have but I made sure that they 
<laughs> knew how ridiculous that was. So that was my story about Thursday. Uh, and we had a game on Wednesday night. In, in, uh, but very, 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 it was crazy week. week. Yeah, yeah it's crazy week. And then I left again Saturday to golf down there and be and then we stayed down there Saturday night into my wife's birthday on Sunday. Happy birthday, Aaron. I love you so much. I'm so sorry. Too late. Uh yeah, definitely <laughs> too late. Um so uh yeah, and then watched the tournament and got to see one of the most amazing finishes in of the year. It's going to be one of the best finishes of the year. I mean, it wasn't like some dude won by three strokes and, you know, just needed a four putt to win. Yeah. He had to birdie. DeChambeau was the, was two groups before him. DeChambeau birdies to go up one and he's fist pumping. He's jumping around. He takes the ball and he tosses it to a little kid and a grown man grabs it in front of the kid and just takes off. He DeShambo starts sprinting towards the guy, starts running towards the crowd. No, no, no. And of course, 18 was packed, so they locked him up pretty quick. <laughs> and uh, that's his ball. And I like, got the ball back for the kid. Yeah. That's yeah. you see that once in a while at baseball games and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's usually there are enough people around it to no, 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 guilt no, no, the no, person. No. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's it's just, I mean, how do you have that dude knew what he was doing because he took off the lead. Like he got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I just but as much as people hate Bryson DeChambeau, that was a pretty cool little move. DeChambeau can be a, a a a whiny little baby a lot of times, but okay. that was a kind of a cool little move. So anyway, that that was cool. Uh, then there's another group right in between them mm -hmm. that both that that uh, you know started the day above them and and ended up below. I saw a professional golfer hit a shot that I would hit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, Thigala. I can't remember how to say his first name. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. he's fun. big, tall, big, tall. Uh, I guess he's Indian or something. Um, saw his dad walking on the course, had a, had a little special course tag. Um, so he, uh, he's in a bunker. Okay. It's a par five. There's a fairway bunker. He hits his drive into a fairway bunker and he's got a, he's got a fairway wood out and he's going to try to blast it up there. Many people were, a lot of people were doing it. No big deal. He hits a worm burner. It hits the front of the bumper, bumper, the bunker, and skips up in the air and goes about 15, 20 feet. And me and my two buddies were like, hey, we just did that yesterday. <laughs> it's the first time all day we saw somebody completely miss hit a ball. And uh, wow. you just don't see that with those pros. Yeah. So that was cool. And then Shoffley came up afterwards, and his ball is like, I don't know. 10 inches from the bunker, but his stance is down inside the bunker. Oh. So he's playing the ball at like his knees and he's so down bad. below chokes down on this, I guess, three wood and just, and he's got, I mean, he has to birdie this hole to win hard to tie. It's a very scorable par five. He smokes this thing from that ridiculous stance uh, up next to the green chips up, Within he's probably about five, about six feet, maybe seven feet, and uh drains the birdie putt. Doesn't drain it. It it almost rolled all the way around the cup, but it went in. Super cool, super cool. Wow. I'll never get to see anything like that probably ever again. That was awesome. It was Shoffley's very first major. So oh wow. Okay. Lots of guys in uh orange, lots of people that had uh uh orange jumpsuits, said Louisville uh department of what at corrections or something like that on him. Yeah. Making fun of the whole Scotty Scheffler ordeal that went down on oh. Friday. Okay. He was actually in it. Not, like, I thought you meant they were like, they were like working. Were like working. Work no. no, 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 no. Uh, I thought Valhalla did a great job. Uh, they, you know, I thought they did an amazing job. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a tragedy that someone had to pass away. I mean, somebody got hit by a by a bus, and that's what stopped everything on Friday. And the guy ended up dying, or the girl. Oh, I don't know, but apparently they were a worker, from what I understand, too. Oh, geez. So, uh, you know, really early, got there early, so and they had, had long days. Sick. Yeah, yeah, they definitely called in sick. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and Scheffler almost had to call in sick too because <laughs> he uh, he uh, so he 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 committed second degree assault on a police officer. 
is what they're charging. That's what they're charging him for. Is it really? Yeah. Are they charging him? Are they actually? Yes, I, so they well, said. They said on Thursday. They said the the Louisville Police Department said that they are continuing the investigation and are going to have an update on Thursday of what they're going to do because his. I mean, he's due to be in court on June third. They moved his date to June third. Okay. That's his arraignment where you know you go in and you say you're guilty, not guilty, and his. His lawyer's like, we are a hundred percent saying not guilty. Okay. He was told to go where he was going. He was, you know, was misinformation. Da, 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 da. The police officer just had a yellow coat on, so it didn't say police on it apparently either. And that was a big thing. So it's gonna be Louisville Police Department. It's gonna have they they've got their hands full with this one, Bob. It was hard to understand. I read about it that day, and it was hard. Like you could kind of understand where there would be like a misunderstanding between both, right? Yeah, From both. So yeah. they're directing all these players to a certain area. It's rainy. It's pouring down rain. It's pitch black at 5 a.m. in in Louisville. Um, somebody just died. Like they got hit by a charter bus and and died. So that's high alert situation, right? For the police around. They're in, they're probably super tense. The players are just trying to get there, and they're trying to follow where these guys are saying to go. Scotty says, I was just following exactly what our, where everyone was told to go, but it, it almost sounds, I don't know, 100% don't know, but it almost sounds like he thought they said to do one thing, and then they didn't, and then this dude just, like, jumped at his car, and he, he like, was still moving, and it got all crazy from there. Yeah, yeah it was hard because it, it sounded like they're saying, like, the the officer tried to stop him and he like tried to like basically speed through and get away so, like ignore the guy well it, he was trying to get around the guy who was stopping him because they were having the players in these PGA special cars they're having they're directing these players a different way so the cop's stopping him and he's trying to get a different way and the cop just keeps jumping in front of him and jumping in front of him and apparently i believe the quote was attached himself mm -hmm. to Scheffler's car that's the that's the hard part is if he's no matter what he was told originally and apparently I guess I guess it it sounds like the original there was traffic no matter what but then there was the traffic was either worse or worse. or different because of now, the accident yeah, so they and so he yeah so he was trying to go the way he originally thought and it th was the second day he was there right cuz it was Friday and he was trying to go that way but then if the officer no matter what was trying to stop him and he's just ignoring that, then that's a, that's a problem. No, hundred percent. No, no, hundred percent. So here's the deal though. Scotty Scheffler is this real quiet. Like all he does is talk about God all the time. You know, he's got a, a his little wife, you know, and they're just this little quiet. They don't do you know, very quiet little couple. And he's a very ho hum, you know, this kind of guy, super great, really nice, Never, never been in any argue. Never see like a lot of these golfers. You see them get irritated with fans. You see them get irritated with other golfers. Never see anything like that from Scheffler. He's the number one golfer in the world. He's like two to one odds to win the next major, which is stupid. That's like old Tiger Woods type odds. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to be like, what? Like, not that guy. Like, he wasn't just ignoring a cop. So that's how a lot of these people are getting around going that everybody's like, you know, I, something's going on, right? He had to be misunderstood. And he came out on his Instagram and was like, it was a huge misunderstanding. Uh, I was, I, I thought I was following traffic. I did not, I, I did not intend to, um, what do you say? I did not intend to um, purposely do the opposite of what any officer was telling me something to that effect of I was, I was, I, I purpose, I did not purposely disregard whatever an officer was telling me. Uh, and he was really, he was even really cool about the whole thing there. He didn't get upset with the LAPD. He was like, it's just a huge misunderstanding. LA, maybe not LA. So Louisville. L -O -U you guys went a long, much longer. L O U I S V E. There's no A. Louisville. I just tried. I didn't even think but a lot of people say LP, Louisville. Maybe. So it feels like there might be an A in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. At the end. I don't uh, know what's in that. So anyway, 
so yeah, Scheffler, the crazy thing is, is he gets booked and he's like, dude, they, if you're in an he was orange, in out. If, like the, bro, the time I got arrested, hold on, bud, that fast. hold on, bud. If you're in an orange jumpsuit, when you get your mug shot, you had to strip naked and get searched. They don't just throw that over top of your clothes. Well, he committed a felony, so sure. I, that's but that's what I'm saying. Like, oh boy, what he was not just in and out. I mean, five a.m. I think that, and then there was a huge rain delay. The tea, first tea time didn't go off till like nine forty-five. I want to say maybe later than that. So I thought he got out at like ten or something. Did he? Was it ten? Did he get out by ten? Okay, so five hours in the in the in the, in the clink, especially if he went through all that that whole process. That's really fast, is it? Okay, well, <laughs> like that's really so. Fast. So <laughs> he, uh, the the crazy thing is, they're talking to him afterwards, and he's like, "It was all so, just so crazy what everything was going on, and you know, I didn't know if I would be able to get back there in time, mm -hmm. or if I would be late, or if I'd be able to make my tea time or not." So in order to keep myself sane, I just started doing my stretches. Well, was so he just started that. stretching while he's in there. Yeah. So good for him. Uh, he, did, and he did also say in his press conference that day, later that day or whatever, it was, he said something like, uh, I was uh, something, something by a power tripping cop or something like that. Like, Oh, he, did he say that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear that part. Yeah. I did that. That's the, I did not hear anything about the power yeah. tripping cop. Yeah, something something along those lines. So I would never expect Scheffler to say something like that. Yeah, I, and I don't know. I don't. I mean, you know, I've heard his name plenty of times, but I don't uh, really know him yeah. well or anything. So anyway, yeah, that was crazy. So the even funnier than that. So on Thursday, our Uber driver, right? First thing he funny says, he looks back at the guy who screwed up the tickets, and he goes, "You ain't said a word in this whole forty minutes we've been in this car, man. You all right? Your wife? You scared your wife's gonna?" Minute. It was Uber took, drive. It took way too long. Jeez. He said, and it was on, we were like eight minutes away from the course. Uh -huh. So uh, he's like, well, you afraid your wife's going to see you here or what? You know, he's all cracking jokes on him. And we told him what happened. And he goes, oh, y'all ain't got tickets yet? Well, he'll tell you what. There's a creek in the back. He, or he goes, I get in. I'm a local. That's what he said. I know <laughs> how to get in. I'm a local. I said, oh, yeah, hook us up. And he's like, there's a creek around back. It's probably going to be a lot of people back there. But go across that creek. There's no gates. There's no fence. You just go right in. And he goes, he said something to the effect of uh, he looks at me. Out of everybody, this is how I know I'm getting big. He goes, he looks like a lineman. He could probably go block a police officer. Let you all get. Says that about you. Said it about me. I was like, I weighed 120 pounds when I graduated high school. <laughs> yeah. He said, but apparently I look like a lineman. So he's like, he could, now this is a real the beard. I think it's got to be it. It's yeah. got to be it. Yeah, I don't know. You gotta, so he's yeah. so he says he looks like a lineman. He run into the cop. You all get past. They're gonna arrest him. He goes, but you're in Louisville, man. As long as you ain't got a record, you're in and out quick. This is Thursday. He says that to us. He's like, you'll be in. He said, Louisville's known as the place where you can commit two felonies in, in an hour. Oh, Because <laughs> they God. let you out so fast. If you've never done anything before, if you got a clean record, you can get arrested twice in an hour. Maybe not felonies. I think he said get arrested. You get arrested twice in an hour. And I was like, really? Oh, that's crazy. We're talking about it. That night, Scheffler gets, gets or that more next morning. And I was like, well, he, as soon as I saw that, I text the, I text the guys that were in that Uber ride with me. And I was like, well, sounds like he's getting out quick at least. <laughs> he did. Oh, wow. That's crazy. And he got to golf and I he did, shot five under. I was going to say, I, I saw on, I want to say Saturday, I think it was on at the gym or something. And I, I just happened to catch that he was at that time was in the top. He worked seven or eight. Or yeah, he worked like his that. way until I think he got like seventh or eighth place. That's where he ended up. But I mean, that's insane to go through all that. Then come, so he shot two under on Thursday, shot five under on Friday, and then I think he was like even or, or one under or something. It was a rough day. So he had his best day of the tournament. That hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, no, his best day was Sunday. I think he shot six or seven under Sunday, okay. but it was his second best day. I mean, yeah. it was up to that point. <laughs> So we saw Scheffler. So we wanted to get to Scheffler. That was the whole thing. Like we're going to walk this course and we started looking at his tee time. This is on Thursday. And we're like, how are we going to get back to what he's teeing off on one? We got to get back there by two 30. So we're walking around and we're like trying to get back. So we get right on the, right next to the green. And we're probably 15 yards from the, from the actual hole. And Scheffler's out. Right. It's his first hole of the entire tournament. And he he's probably 160, 170 out, and he holds out for an eagle. 
That's minus two. Mm -hmm. He ended the day at minus two. Wow. So we saw all of Scheffler's scoring that day. Yeah, yeah. We got to actually watch it, watch it bounce up and roll in. It was pretty cool. Wow. Got to watch him hole out on one. So yeah, it's a lot of cool things. Got to see a lot of cool stuff. Huh. What a big week. Yeah. Jeez, old Pete. Oh man. Okay. The first hole I saw on Saturday was their the the their main hole 13. It's got this like rock waterfall thing. It's an island green. Very first shot when we walked in there. On Saturday, guy hold out. Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool. So you so you got to see so you 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 got to see it three days then. No. Did I say Saturday? Saturday. I meant Sunday. Okay. Sunday. Okay. Sunday. Sorry. Okay. You golfed on Saturday. I golfed in the PGA championship on Saturday. On Saturday. Yeah. Didn't make any money. Didn't make any money. And then you watched the professional. Made behind. five dollars on a bet that our cart would beat the other cart. <laughs> In the PGA Championship, John Daly get his gets an exemption. It gets an exemption. He's allowed to drive a cart while he golfs. Really? Yeah. Just for being a drunk? <laughs> yes. Well, he's That's a past, cool. He's got a lifetime member. He's he he's a he can golf in the Open, or in the PGA Championship for the rest of his life because he's won. Oh. So he he's got an automatic exemption in there forever, and he somehow for what he's got to have some kind of medical something. He gets to ride a cart. <laughs> <laughs> it is not a golf cart. It's like a tractor. It's got like a bed in the back. He can't. He still got his cat driving a gator. His cat, yeah, that's what it looked like. His caddy had to carry his clubs, and he's driving this 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 gator around. Like I'm talking, he was six inches from driving on the tee box. I was like, he's gonna drive on the tee box, and he <laughs> just missed it. I'm like, I can't believe what I'm seeing. <laughs> That's your old boy. That's, That's your my friend. boy, dude. That me and Dale. Yeah, I couldn't get close enough to him to have a conversation with him, see if he remembered me. I had the same shirt on that day, though. Oh, there you go. On Thursday when Maybe I saw him. Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. Man, I, I don't have anything to uh to to match that kind of stuff. Um I'll tell you, uh, my big thing was I was at the gas station after work one day last week, and uh I mean, you know, you see him all the time, you hear him all the time, but People with these really, really loud cars, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah, they, yeah. whether they do it, make that, make it that way on purpose. Some or of them if they think. just lost their muffler to going down the road. All right. Um, it always feels like it's on purpose. Sure. You know? Yeah. Um, and, and it's, it's like, especially as you get older, you're like, even just a second of it, you're like, that is the most annoying. I, that makes me upset yes. to have to listen yep. to that. Yeah. Even if it's just for a yep. couple seconds. Yep. I hear you, Karen. But I'm right. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Because <laughs> I'm pumping gas. And this guy's pulling out of the out of the gas station. And it's super loud. And he stops like at the edge of the thing before he pulls out and he rev it up. And he revved it up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes, exactly like that. And it's so and I hear something across the little across the way like by the car next to mine and i look up and this older lady's looking at me and i'm like oh what and she's like something like oh that was a real jerk (laughs) (laughs) i was like like, wow that was the nerdiest way to say that and also that's what i was thinking you're exactly right at the same time (laughs) <laughs> oh gosh that's good i just gave her a little laugh and uh and, uh, and then well, thought about it for the rest of the yeah um that's awesome anyway there was that and you know i i've been you know i've been i've been wanting to rant about this and, and let's do a quick uh let's do a quick get off my lawn yes let's um, do it. I, wh- why do i have to answer an extra question about whether i want to go to the car wash after i after i pump gas why do i have to answer that question i <laughs> Uh, if I want to go to the Mike's car wash after this, I'm going to drive so, down the street or in the, to the next let, neighborhood and go to the car wash. Let me tell you this. Here's my thing. I get it. You're a, you're a business and you have a car wash attached and you're trying it's to not find attached. it. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> it's not right If there. you are a business and you got a car wash attached and you got a little thing up there that's like the speed wound die pike, you want a car wash with it? Yes or no? I get that. They're like, hey, you got it here. It's right next to where you're at. You drive by it to leave. But the ones that ask you if you want a Mike's, I've thought about that. I've seen this before. Do you want a Mike's car wash? I'm like, where's the closest Mike? I got to drive down the road? No. 
Like if I don't have to leave here and it costs me like six bucks, yes, I'll think about it. Yes, but if uh, no, I'm not. I'm not just changing my whole day now. Like I'm not changing my day so I can take a half an extra hour to go get a car wash. And even if I'm going there after this, I'll pay for it there like a normal person. <laughs> Types Why am I code. paying for it here? He types in a code from UDF to or Speedway to go get a car wash at Mike's car. Wash. Every time I, I every time I answer that question, I'm like, I can't pump gas until I say yes or no <laughs> that I'm going to go to this specific other business after this. That's that's crazy. I know it's a partnership. I'm sure they're getting money just for putting I, it on there. Oh yeah, I, oh yeah, I'm but, sure. I, it's I'm like, oh my God, I hope this is not gonna be a slippery slope and I gotta answer and I gotta go to the skyline and before I pay, I gotta answer whether I'm gonna go to across the street to Pet Boys or or down to the bank or something. Or yeah. I I, I, I don't know. Anyway, um I totally agree with you though. I have I, I don't know that I've ever been in a get off my lawn situation with it, but I have looked at it and went. Mike's car. You want to know if I want a Mike's car wash? It's every time. I'm like every time. I'm like, this is crazy. I I know. I think this every single time I have to do this, but it's just so crazy to me that I have to that I have to press this extra button and answer this question. Uh, anyway, you know what I usually think? I usually go, why is it asking me that? And then I'm done. That's exactly. Yeah, it. You may you can't see I'm my. Not, not you can't angry. see the I'm motion. Like, you huh? can't see the motion. Uh, on 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 the if you're if you're just listening to this mm -hmm. but i was moving my finger at the exact same time i was talking it really didn't take but like almost point point zero two percent of effort check us out on youtube to see the <laughs> uh to see the motions are, are I, just, uh, I get i get what you're saying podcast. i get what you're saying i'm laughing at the fact that you get I'm that not, upset about it no, but I'm i not, i'm not that <laughs> upset about it i think i just said it on the on the back end of that yeah of that you know the guy with the large the irritation the, the loud car. yeah yeah it, it's it's not it's it is oh it's irritating I, you I, you just said you think it every time you pump well this. i think about it every time but i'm not like cussing about it or anything i'm not I'm here's not, what i want you oh to my god that makes it here's a, when was the last time you went to mike's car wash i go there all the time i know you do here's my question too uh, we can you know you time. don't you can get a code you don't have to go right away you don't have to go right then and there mm -hmm. you can use that code for later Is that here's right? what i want you to do i might have done it once here's I was gonna say, I want you to get a Mike's car wash from Speedway or wherever you were at. Yeah, I I may have done. I think you, even at Kroger, I think you have to answer that question. Do you really? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because I I usually only go. Well, I usually only go to either UDF, Kroger, or Speedway. That's where I pretty much always get my gas, and I I feel like I have to answer that everywhere, everywhere you go. I go. Yeah. So I try not to get gas. Here's can I give you one that gets on my nerves when it comes to gas stations? Yes. I realize that the little the little uh, township slash suburb uh, that I live in in Delhi, mm -hmm. Delhi Township, Cincinnati, Ohio. I realize that it takes fifteen minutes to get anywhere from here, so we're in the middle of nowhere. It's not really in the middle of nowhere, but sometimes it feels that way, right? Like no one drives through Delhi to get somewhere, right? You don't. You literally. This, I mean, on it, you don't drive through Delhi to get anywhere. You either. You you always go around Delhi if you're going anywhere. You never go up the up into Delhi and then back out of it. Like I go through Western Hills to get a lot of places. I'll go through Shiviat to get somewhere. I can go through just about everywhere. Nobody goes through Delhi. So I get that. I get this. I get that before I say this. Okay. Our gas is always 20 cents higher than anywhere around you can go to glenway and it's 20 cents lower than what it is at speedway at delhi pike really you can go anywhere except for where the amazon people go out at down at 50 where the little shell station is well they charge them a normal leg there yeah. but Del every and it's every gas station the kroger gas station now i can get my points there so i'll use that but sure. the kroger the shell the the udf the speedway both speedways both udfs 30 cents higher, you drive out, come on, go on to Glenway, and you can, not 30, 20 cents. It's usually like 360 here or 356, and you go down there, and it's like 340, 338, something like that. Ridiculous. I had no idea. Yeah. I had no Always. idea. I, saying, you know, that that what you said to start the whole thing, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, but I mean, come on. You're, 
Like it, you you're can- delivering gas to a spot. Mm-hmm. Well, oh no, okay. I wasn't even thinking about. I, I was. I'm thinking about like the, they're saying that it's going to cost more because you got to deliver it there. No, they're oh, charging yeah. more. We're they're charging more because they know it's going to be. But there's more. There's options there. But they they know that if you're in Delhi, you're just going to stay in Delhi. You're not going out of it and then coming back. That's ridiculous. But it's really you could. I mean, it's probably worth driving. 10 more minutes to go into Western Hills to well to think about it. I, I get 20. I my truck takes about 20 gallons of gas. 20, 21, 22. What does it cost you? 300 dollars to uh <laughs> it's a 70 some bucks right now. <laughs> so let's say uh 0. 0.20 times 20 gallons, four dollars. No, it's not worth four dollars of my time to drive to Glenway, get gas. And come back home because that's a half hour of my day, which is worth way more than four dollars. It depends. Okay. So it's- yes, it's annoying as all hell, but I'm I don't, but I'll pay four extra. It'll co- cost me seventy six dollars instead of seventy two dollars to fill my tank up in Delhi. Then over in now, does that add up over time? Sure, but. That's how they get you. They're like, oh, you know, well, how much are you going to save? And now it sounds like a lot, right? Remember back in the day when like, you'd be like, oh my gosh, gas is two cents cheaper a gallon over there. Yeah. And you get 10 gallons of gas and that's 20 cents that you saved. Great job, bud. And you need two dimes. Cause I'll give them to you <laughs> yeah. if you need them. Yeah. All right. But that's the, cr- that cracks me up with gas already anyway. But I mean, come on. They know I'm not penning. If I need gas right now and all I'm doing is going to Kroger then I'm going to go to the Kroger's and I'm not going to go way far away to get gas first and then go. I'm just going to right. stop and get it on the way there. I don't, and it'll cost me $4 more than it would have if I didn't. Yeah. I can never tell you how much gas is anywhere because I just, do, it, it does, doesn't matter. Wherever I, I pay am, for it. Yeah. Wherever I am or wherever I'm going, where, whenever I decide it's time to stop, that gas station is where I'm getting gas. You know how I determine when it's time to stop? When that thing that tells you how much gas you have left gets down to like four. And I'm like, well, I got about 10 miles left. So let's see what we can get to. How low do you let your gas gas tank go? Uh, you know, it depends. Uh, I I will. I'll usually. It, it'll usually. I guess the gas light will come on most of the time, but not always. It's just if I'm. My gas light comes on, says there's 37 miles left. Hmm. I, um, I know for if I've ran out of gas in my truck, but that was only because I, I knew I was running low and I was like, Oh, I got to go to a gas station. And I got on the phone and I forgot and I was just driving. And yeah. next thing I know my truck's going, doop, doop. I was like, Oh crap. Oh crap. I forgot to go get gas. Yeah. Um, I get distracted very easily, Me but too. I am a true believer in you've got 10 miles left. You got 10 miles left once that thing says zero. Yeah, I, I would I would definitely much rather play it safe and I'll sometimes it'll be pushed it. Yeah. Pushed it pretty good. If I'm if I'm like going to Kroger to go to the grocery store or something and I'm below a quarter of a tank, sometimes if I'm thinking about it, I'll be like, I might as well just oh, here. back up yep. now. Cause I've you know you Kroger right. click list or do you shop? I shop. Uh, once in a while I'll still I'll still get it uh delivered. Delivered, yeah. Um, I've hardly ever picked it up, like done the click list and then picked it up. Like yeah. I've I love, done it a few times. I love going to the grocery store. And shop. We've talked about this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, no, anyway. Yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. I don't know where I was going with that. Well, I'll tell you where we can go is, go. uh, is talking about the Mount Rushmore of roasters. Oh, well, let's, let's get into that. some comedy here. Adam, Adam, kick us off here, bud. Who are, who is your Mount Rushmore of comedic roasters or just roasters in general? I wrote, I only wrote down eight names. Okay. Um, I feel like there are a lot more people who have had great sets at roasts and, you know, and, and there are so many roasts that have happened that are not like, you know, they're roasts on YouTube from like like little comedy festivals and stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, the, you the don't really know of, all the yeah stuff that went. Louis J. Yeah. Gomez and stuff. <laughs> you know, like um, but you know, mo- it's mo- 
people mostly know the roast, the Comedy Central roasts, and then even those like old roasts, the Dean Martin roasts, and things like sure, that. Sure, sure. Um, they didn't get as dirty on people back then. No, yeah, they, no, they didn't. Uh, yeah, it's it's flat out nasty now. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna start off with two, and I'm gonna start off with with a guy from back in that time. Uh, it's the only older guy I've got, I think, but um, he was known and not just on roasts. His whole brand of comedy is roasting people. I think I know who you, I think I know where you're going here. Don Rickles. Yes. Don Rickles is uh, just an insult comic, basically. That's basically what he was. <laughs> and and uh, he was one of the ugliest dudes you ever seen with his yeah, bald yeah. head and everything. And he'll tell you how ugly you are. <laughs> yes, he will. And how ugly your wife is. Yes, he will. <laughs> and everybody else. Yes, he will. <laughs> And uh, yes, I've seen some old, some old stuff and uh, it was really funny. I, uh, so he had a shortly before he died. I mean, he was like maybe 90. He had this little show that they put on YouTube and I can't remember. It was like dinner with Don or something like that. And he would have like comedians come on. And all he did was, and I, yeah, they had dinner and I, the only one I, I, I think I watched three or four of them, but the big one for me was Zach Galifianakis was on it. And it was just really cool to see uh, he and Zach Galifianakis kind of mess with each other a little that bit. That would have been awesome. Yeah. Um, so anyway, but but Don Rickles is known as like the kind of roaster, um, kind of almost maybe the original roaster. Sure. Putting him on there. I'm going with the Roastmaster General, Jeff Obviously. Ross. Obviously, you know, Obviously. He's, he's been on every roast on Comedy Central. Yep. He he's like the executive producer on them all now. He yeah. like he does everything. He he writes for other people. He does his own set. He's the executive producer. Yep. Um, So he's like almost in charge of all. Oh, he's the he's the host of I think he started all the the uh, roast battles, which are. Yeah. If you haven't seen the roast battles, they're so f- there are some really bad ones, too, but. There are, especially when it first started and they had it on Comedy Central all the time. There are so, and you can find them. They're still going on. And they're like, they, they have them in like three different cities now. And you can see them like on YouTube. But there are some of the funniest comedy. Dude, is people you don't even know. That's the best part about it. About that's it. the best part about it. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, when it started and uh, Joe List and not nah, if it started, but yeah. when it was on, when it, I don't remember what it was on. But Joe List and his wife that. went after each other. Yep. Dude, that was, like everyone knew she was going to win. He had no chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was yeah. so great. He, he didn't want to be, he wanted to be mean, but not too mean. Yes. Yes. That was so good. Um, I loved every bit of that stuff, man. On the show, they did, they basically did that on the show Crashing that Pete Holmes was the star of. Yeah. Yeah. From, you know, yeah. years ago now. But, um, yeah, with uh, Ernie or, um, uh, what's his name from was on the Howard Artie Lang, Artie Lang. Artie Lang. Yeah, Artie Lang was in it. Yes, and basically played himself. Yes, he did. <laughs> it, yeah. Um. In matter of fact, there were tons of comedians from New York on that that played themselves. Um. But there was a scenario where he met uh um Jamie Lynn, I think is her name, another co- another comedian, and she was playing a character, and they like met and started dating a little bit and stuff like that, and they ended up on a roast. And they like went through the tournament and went against each other in the final. Oh, that's awesome. And, he, and that's how they broke up. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I is. guarantee it. Because because he he was like too nice of a guy to really go after her, but she was going hard after him. Ooh. And this was the finals. Yeah. And I whoever won like got some opportunity or something like that. Yeah. And so he like like she was killing him the first couple of jokes. And then like she like really like struck a nerve or something. And he like decided to turn it on. Going. And he said like two really funny jokes and, uh, and he ended up winning, but then he like immediately like felt Apologized. so bad and he went out and like said, and she was like, Oh my God, that was amazing. And he like really trashed her yeah. during the rose and he like saw her outside and she's like, Oh, that was so amazing. Great. And he's like, no, what are you talking about? I feel horrible. <laughs> and they broke up because of that. And so uh, felt like that would happen. Yeah. So anyway. But the roasts are so funny. The roast battles. I love so funny. those roast battles. Yes, and they always get like Nikki Glazer was a was a was a judge on one of them. Uh, he's always it's yeah. always Jeff Ross and two other comics. It's it's always uh, yes. not even always comics. Sometimes they're just celebrities. But yeah, yeah. But that's so yeah. Jeff Ross started all that. So Don Rickles, Jeff Ross. Um, I, I think I'm going to put another guy on here that only did a couple of actual roasts, but. He is known by 
by all the comics as really one of the meanest guys because he roasted people constantly off stage, on stage, it, you know, at the comedy cellar, at the comics table or whatever, like people talk. And, and there are comedians who legitimately hated the guy because he was so mean to everybody. Yeah. Patrice O'Neill. Oh, wow. Really? I didn't yes. realize that. Patrice O'Neill just would be, would be, I mean, prolifically kill you. Like not on stage either. Not he's just, not getting anything just, from he, it. Just just because he's, he's getting a laugh from the rest of the table. Yes. Yep. yes. Yep. And uh, so he he's like so well known for that among the comics. It it's uh, you know I don't know. It it, it would have been fun to see him because he died a while ago now. Yeah. If if he would some of these. Yeah. Yeah. If he would have stuck around and did some more roasts, um, I'm sure he had. I can't remember which roast he was. Big Jay Ogerson would be the way if you are really good at crowd work. I feel like you could be a roaster. He was a roaster on. I think it was Luis J Gomez's roast. Oh, was it? Yes, because uh, he does. So Luis J Gomez created Skank Fest, which is becoming one of yeah. the biggest comedy festivals now. Um, and a uh, two, three, four years ago, maybe they did a roast of him, and he's not a good comic or anything, but but he has a bunch of friends that are in it. Sure, and uh. And so yes, and Jay Okerson and Joe List both had unbelievable oh, sets. Yeah. Um my last one, I have to make a decision here. Uh, you know how I'm gonna I'm gonna throw on there is my fourth guy is gonna be Greg Geraldo, another dead guy. Why do I pick I've I picked three of them, three of my four dead people. I've only <laughs> I've only got one dead guy. <laughs> Greg Geraldo, as a matter of fact, earlier today, I watched like a whole 20 minute video of just his, his jokes at roasts. Did you, that um, was a lawyer or, yes. or something like that. He was that. like a Harvard graduate and he yeah. was a lawyer. So smart. Yes. Like, and, <laughs> and he would get a note, like he was on, what was the show that, uh, uh, Tough crowd. Yes. Yeah. And do you ever watch that? He, so he's got a dark side of comedy episode. Oh, I bet. Oh my gosh. I gotta dude. watch that. That's it is good. Yeah. He's one of the most brilliant people you've ever heard He's anybody so talk about. Funny. Yeah. And he would like get so like he got uh what's the guy's name? Dennis uh Leary. Dennis Leary was on there and they like he just I know what you mean. And it pissed Dennis Leary off and he just wouldn't because he said something stupid and Gerardo's just like, no, 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 you don't even know what you're talking about. And you <laughs> like and it was tough crowd. So guess what? If you're gonna say something dumb. Gerardo would let you know how dumb it was. I'll tell he you, was the biggest part of the tough. He was the toughest in the crowd. Yeah, that that show was really ended up being a, a big, Colin Quinn. Yes, yes, Colin Quinn. Yeah, um, it that show ended up being like a big time because there was all comics and it was a lot of the same guys a lot of times. Yeah, but and Patrice was was on that show all the time. Yeah, and he would he would get like that with people. And there were there were a few times where and you can go back and watch them where guys legitimately got mad at each other yeah. because they like insulted each other so bad yeah. or you had a take because it was like it was a lot of political takes and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that and they would just be like you're in it like get it. yeah 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 <laughs> uh nick DePaulo was on that show and yeah. he's like uh especially now is apparently like this like extreme conservative nice. like <laughs> yeah, yeah. People, people uh joke about him all the time but anyway um yeah i'm, I'm gonna make greg Geraldo my fourth guy Okay, so just to make it easy, Greg Geraldo is the only dead guy that I have on mine. So that's a that's one that we agree with. And they showed some of his roast stuff, and he's pretty good, man. He's pretty he's good. So good. Uh, Jeff Ross has to be on there. Jeff Ross has to be on there. He's he's the 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 George Washington on this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got Lisa Lampanelli. Yeah. Lisa Lampanelli for a span of about when when Comedy Central was really turning them out. Mm -hmm. I feel like early 2000s. Yeah. Lisa Lampanelli was always on there. And whether she was a big Lisa Lampanelli or lost all the weight, Lisa Lampanelli, mm -hmm. she could she could she could she could roast with the best of them. Mm -hmm. And after this week or after a couple weeks ago, only because of that and she's done multiple but she has earned her way on to the mount rushmore i'm giving her nikki i'm giving nikki glazer props to get up there even though they're so, oh, so close yeah. there's so many good ones but nikki glazer has had multiple good sets and you know call it recency bias call it whatever you want 
I almost did the exact mm-hmm. same thing. She's always she's always been good at the roasts, but this that Tom Brady one, she was yeah, stole the show. Who were the who were the rest that you have on there? I put Anthony Jesselnick on there. So Jesselnick's perfect, but I I feel like I so I've only seen him do one roast, um, and they had yeah. a couple of his jokes, and it's like. I mean, it's it, it, the thing that I think the thing that bugs me is it's his comedy. He just it's his comedy routine in a joke form, just yeah. at somebody else. Mm-hmm. And it's like I kind of like how these people make things. I mean, it's still personal, I guess, personable, but it just felt it felt the same old. Like he his slow deli- all that. Like, come on, man, you're up there roasting. Let's have some fun with the dude, right? No, nope. It's got to be his delivery and his timing, which is great. It works for him, mm-hmm. but I'm. I mean, he and he'll roast you. He'll say he is going to toe the line, jump over it, take a swim, and watch the line a mile behind him because he's getting as far over that line as he can get. So oh, yeah. that's going to make for a good roaster that you're not scared to say something. <laughs> right. I I want to say he wrote for a couple other roasts as well. Sure. Yeah. Um. But I, I at some point I heard him say like he doesn't he doesn't like doing those anymore for whatever reason. It was probably for some Comedy Central reason or something. Yeah. But um. Anyway, I wrote him down. I did. I had Nikki Glazer written down. Gilbert Gottfried. Yeah, he's been. I, you know, when I was younger, I was like, I can't stand the way he talks and yells and stuff. The older I got, and it's the a, older he got, a dirty old man. I know he, but he was so he was really funny. If yeah. you don't, if you can set aside how he sounds, yeah, it's he was really funny, and that's part of his delivery too like oh yeah some of those, it, it may not be the crazy the funniest thing but it just might be something crazy and it comes out in that voice yes same with uh norm mcdonald sure just the way he yep. you know it would be a really like dumb low he was on a couple thing. he was on two different lists norm mcdonald was that mm-hmm. i looked at i don't remember him in any roasts he oh i i was just watching because somebody somebody made it he was on the dais for one and somebody made a joke about him and I can't remember which one he was on, but it, oh, he was on Bob Saget's because he and Bob Saget were really oh. friends. Um, so maybe it was just that one, but and yeah, he might have been on another one too. But anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, Norman Godfrey Drake. was on that too. Godfrey was good friends with that. I remember that one. Yeah, uh, and I also I also wrote down Natasha Leggero. She's been on a few of them. It's been a long time. But can I tell you, she's really funny. super underrated comedian. I totally agree. I think she is, and. She plays the 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 young woman thing and like will twist things around like you didn't see it coming the way she talks and then twist it back around. It's like, oh, I see you, girl. That was funny as I'll yeah. get out. She was like, she was uh in the show Whitney. Me and my wife watched Whitney when Whitney Cummings had her show with uh Chris Delia um Delia, yeah. Delia. And she was the best friend. Oh my God. She stole the show, dude. She was the funniest person in the whole show. All right. I think by far, she was the funniest person in the whole show. Uh, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Yep. She's great. Uh, anyway, that's what I had written down. I feel like I could write down 10 more people, but I was married to somebody that do they do Moshe that. Cash. Moshe Cash. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They do. They, I think it's really funny too. And have you ever seen that when they do, they like, talk to they like bring up uh couples and they like talk to them about their sex life and all kinds of craziness and yeah get people to say the, they have a podcast yeah. together i can't remember what it's called but yes because he was motion casher was just on take your shoes off which which is rick glassman's podcast anyway it's crazy uh yeah I, I just i just saw him on a podcast recently but yes they've been doing a podcast since they since they've been married yeah uh and yeah i think they're both really good yeah uh okay <clears throat> I'll tell you uh, somebody who, so Cat Williams was on. I don't want to say it was Flava Flav's roast. Okay, uh, yeah, it was because uh, he in in the uh, the Shannon Sharp thing. He talks about how uh, they wanted him to say something about uh, how black Flava Flav was, and he wouldn't do it. And then they gave the jokes to Snoop, and Snoop made all the crispy jokes and all that. Every single person on that roast, hundred percent, made a complexion joke. Yes, <laughs> why cat wouldn't do it? Okay. Anyway, listen, cat's just letting you know what the Illuminati's up to, bro. Uh, sure, he has his values, I guess, or I don't know. Um, you can already tell where I'm gonna go. I think. Um, can I tell you that I think so? We're we'll going to the Cat Williams thing now. Yeah. We did Cat Williams. What was it called? 
Uh, Under- it was called Undercover Brother. <laughs> Undercover Brother. It was called Snakes on a Plane. It was called. Um, oh, I've got. I had it written down somewhere. I thought. That's all right. It was it's called Cat Williams' newest one on Netflix, Netflix. special. Yeah. Um, and I'll look it up while I talk about. It. I'm just gonna tell you that hundred percent. We talked about last a couple weeks ago. This was definitely a like I, in my head. I was like, this is a hundred percent. A, a a money grab off of the Shannon Sharp thing. And you said, well, he might have recorded it beforehand. There's no chance. And of course, he did mention the Shannon Sharp yes, thing. Right. He de- this is definitely after he came out on Shannon Sharp, letting everybody know what they needed to know about what was wrong, what was going on. Yeah. Yep. Uh, because every, uh, every black actor had to wear a dress in a movie. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he's read uh, 3,000 books in a year and runs a 3140. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, oh, yeah, but the golf thing, he didn't try to, he didn't try to, he, he actually played off like he wasn't that good at golf, didn't he? Yes. I do remember that because I was like, I, in, my, in my head when Shannon Sharp was talking about it, this dude's going to act like he's a scratch golfer or something, too. <laughs> yeah. I just saw a recent video. He played with a group of, a uh, group of people I can't remember, and he. So I got to see his golf swing. You got to see his golf swing. It's so funny. Oh, I would love to see it. I'm it, sure it's amazing. It's very stiff. <laughs> uh, um, I, and look, he might be better than I am, but uh, at golf. But uh, um, anyway, it's it's just not a good swing. Well, I'm trying to find his. Where is it? It's not even you know, on here anymore. You notice this after you finish something uh, on Netflix. Woke folk. Woke folk. That's it. Um, boy, are we going to have two episodes in a row called folks? Folks. <laughs> um, no, uh, after, after you finish something on Netflix, it's like gone. Yeah. Like I, it's the only reason I found that is because it's still top 10 on Netflix, is it really? but it's not on any of my other things that I was scrolling on. And it was, and I just scrolled across top 10 on Netflix and it's number 10 right now. And, and even sometimes if you go down far enough where it says watch again yeah, and you can go through a hundred of those things and you're like realize, man i just i just watched this ago where's it at anyway i don't know i don't understand all the algorithms and all the oh, ways something to it buddy there's something to it i guarantee you i just yeah. don't know it yeah uh so anyway yeah please go ahead you uh uh woke folk you no, feel so like? it was better than i thought it was gonna be because yeah. i thought this was gonna be just a and in it you know look i've said it a million times used to love cat williams mm-hmm the comedy special that I or the comedy show I went to at Cintas Center was the worst comedy show I've, that anyone's ever been to ever, and it was his, and it was great all the way up until him. And it was he, it it he, my man has got something going on. Yeah, he's got something going on. He truly believes all this stuff, and I some of it. I mean, you know, you really got to think like he really thinks this stuff out. The thing I'm glad he did was he started getting into some of these things. And he did turn them into jokes mm-hmm. and it didn't just become i I'm going to do what I did on Shannon Sharp and just say the craziest things that come out of my head. He did a good job of getting into something and then flipping it on you and turning it into a joke. So I was happy about that. There were actually jokes in this and some of them were, yo, what were y'all think I was going to be talking about? You know what I mean? And it was like something from the Shannon Sharp deal. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. God, it's been a week and a half since I watched this, but I was pleasantly surprised that it was better than I, I was going in with zero. Like I thought I would give this a, a, a 1.1. Yeah. That's where I thought I was going with this. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't as bad. It wasn't as bad as I thought. Okay. All right. What's your thoughts on it? What was your, there was some good stuff in there. There was some, there was, you know, it was a lot of, a lot of talking, but uh, yeah, uh, let's see. <laughs> See if I wrote down anything positive here. Uh, There's got to be one. Blamed Shannon Sharp immediately. Oh, it was, it was his fault that he that yeah. it was, that it went all crazy. He made him say all that stuff. It sounded yeah. like he was saying. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, I I did totally connect on the changing of words thing. How how uh you know especially young oh. people will like will just change the meanings of words that already exist. I think about that all the time. I'm like that drives me crazy. Do you know what the word literally means? Not anything of the way anyone uses it. <laughs> yeah, people will. Like when people go, it's literally, it's literally the greatest thing that's ever happened. Yeah. 
<laughs> do you even know what literally means? It's literally a thousand degrees out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you even have, do you have any, you're that, like, it couldn't be more wrong. They <laughs> changed the, de- this is no joke. In the Webster's Dictionary this year, they added a definition to literally. Because it's used improperly so often. I, they Pe- do that every year. It's so dictionary. dumb. It drives me crazy. Yes. You, be, you're supposed to be the dictionary. You're supposed to be the highest standard, the standard of, of what words mean. And just because they're used in, you're exactly right. They're used incorrectly all the time. So they change the meaning of them. Yes. So anyway, yeah, I did like that part. That was good. I did like that part too. <laughs> I, I connected with them on that for yeah. sure. Um, yeah, I can't believe it. he showed some of the videos that he did. That was flying so football cool. kid. Can I tell you how great that was? Tell me you didn't laugh at that. That was really tell you didn't laugh at that. <laughs> Come on, man. He just when the ball was snapped and he, he just ran, ran through the line and there was nobody here. Listen, <laughs> listen, I'm with Cat Williams on this. I'm all about I got nothing wrong. I'm all about empowering blind people and people that have you know, certain disabilities to be able and think they can do whatever they want, but don't put them on a real football field with real people trying to really hit people. <laughs> he can't and, play football. And don't tell him he's good at it either. No, don't <laughs> tell him he's good at it. He ain't ever tackled anybody in his life. And then you put him on defense. You got to go find somebody. You literally have to see the ball and hit him. He needs to be on offense where you can just barely reach out and hopefully touch somebody. Yeah. I feel like that's why you, that you can put him on the line and and talk, tell the person he's going up against like you have this guy he he can't see you okay <laughs> just just come up let him put your put his hands on your shoulder pads you put it, yours on his and you guys just kind of stand there give, and just yeah. kinda, give him know, a little give him a little push a little like you did something right. act like you fell down yes and then run by him. <laughs> yes He's um, out there for multiple plays. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because you do see those videos all the time. Yeah. Like they let a kid come in, come out. I everybody that. fake yeah. dives. Everybody out fake. Them. Yeah, they, they let them kick score a touchdown. field goal, or they shoot a three, or they do something like that. Yeah, that's cool. I love all that. The stuff. other team is getting the rebound and giving, giving it back, it back to them. Yeah. Yes, love all that. Sure. <laughs> yeah, football though, that's different. That is different. Uh, I wrote down the word "they" and put quotation marks around it and a question mark. This is where he loses credibility when he says his outra- says outrageous things. He says so many things. They they don't want you to know, or they keep they they're making us do that. Who's they? The Illuminati. Okay, then say the Illuminati every time, and tell me who the Illuminati is. If you're so willing to tell me all these inside secrets, and and you're now the secret guy, and you're the only real one around and stuff, then okay. Be real. Tell me who all the people are. Tell me who they are that are making you do this or making us do that or whatever. Tell me that. Stop saying they because you sound dumb when you say that so much. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Let's see. Not that that bothered me. Uh, uh, let's see. I can't even read my writing. Okay. Think, thinks he has the secret to everything. Yeah. Uh, like he's, he's saying something profound. He thinks he's saying something profound every time he opens his mouth. Yeah. And he also thinks that he's saying something that is going to inspire every other time he opens. His yes. Mouth. He's very trying he's, to be inspiration. He wants to be this intellectual so bad. And especially when he calms down and he uh-huh. his voice real low. Uh-huh. Well, I don't he's think it ever gets low. People think. Yeah. That's, <laughs> well, that's, that's the, that was the other thing too. I was like, when he go, when he like gets, you know, like boisterous, and, yeah, his voice is like, eh, like it's irritating. That that's not his real voice either, but it's it's like this exaggerated thing. But when he's mm-hmm. trying to be real calm, let me tell you, he's trying to make you think that he's very smart. Yeah, he's like Stephen A. Smith. He used the biggest damn words you can possibly think of. He's getting under my skin more all the time now, mm-hmm. too. Anyway, um, yes. But m- mostly when he says stuff, he's trying to make it sound profound. It's not. It's like either old stuff or it's or it's like something that you're like, what? no, yeah. that's obvious or yeah. that's not. I don't know. They want you to think it's because of. Yeah. I, I, I... Anyway. And stop, stop using the B word to end every sentence. Like, I, I, there's a definitely a place for cursing to make jokes funnier in comedy. When you say it, we've had plenty of these things. Mm-hmm. 
when you say it, when you end every sentence with the B word or an MF or whatever, that takes away from it. Mm -hmm. Only use those in very specific places. Be strategic about when you use mm -hmm. that. You can't just use those words at the beginning and ever end of every sentence. It just, it, it washes out so much other stuff. It, it's, it's no good. And for a while he did that. Yep. It, he just had like a span where he was like saying it constantly mm -hmm. i'm like i can't even concentrate on what you're saying because it's that's all i hear 2.7 i went 2.6 hey, hey, hey we were really close you went higher than i did that's crazy. <laughs> yeah i just don't think he's funny anymore man i don't there are like little cameos and movies he's had that have been, that were funny yeah, sure. there are you know jokes from old stand-ups and stand uh, specials that are funny yeah mostly this guy's not that funny to me mm -hmm. unfortunately I don't yep know. i'm i'm kind of with you unfortunately too. and he just he seems more and more out there every time yeah, i see he's him. getting worse bud he's getting worse and he's getting publicity for doing it now i know so it's not gonna and you're stop. right that's it's he, not gonna stop he's get he i mean he he was able to put this special on netflix out right now because four months ago or three months ago or whatever <clears throat> He was the talk of the town. He was, mm -hmm. everybody yep. talked about him. For and everybody week. jumped on. Netflix gave him a bunch of money because they knew they'd get clicks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but he's bad. the greatest underground comic ever. But this is his fourth Netflix he'll, yeah, he'll, sellout special. He'll like, you sold out, you, bro. Yeah. He's the, like, I don't care if you sell out. Good for you. Make your money, but don't act like you don't got anything or nobody like you're not getting anything. You, you, you hit this, your fourth Netflix special. He's also talked about how he's the greatest, uh, selling touring comedian too. He's yeah. selling out theaters and arenas. You can't be the best underground guy. If you're no. selling out arenas. No, you're not underground, bro. <laughs> you're not. This guy's so delusional. It's crazy. <laughs> that gets me. Talking about how ah, you know, they won't let me get it big. They won't let me do this. You got four Netflix specials, and then other, You're other making side so of the mouth. Much money. He talks about how successfully, yeah. Uh, they talk. I mean, apparently, he really is a cool dude, like a great dude to the to people that are good to him. Like he yeah. just, you hear tons that. of stories of where he just walks out and gives people ten thousand dollars, and he just does. You know, I mean, obviously, he's making money, but it. <laughs> But he just does stuff like that all the time and doesn't ask, doesn't say anything, doesn't try to make it a big deal. Just like, here you go. And, uh, I mean, that's, you know, there's something to that. Yeah. I also think dude's whacked out of his mind. Every time. Man. Now he did, somebody did have him run a 40 recently. And it's it's on the internet. And it was faster than you'd think. But it wasn't three one. It I wasn't whatever he said. Ahead. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't sub four. Right. I think he said sub four. Yeah, and I, it was like pretty impressive for because he's in his fifties or whatever. Sure, and it was pretty impressive for for how old he is and everything. But he's a little tiny guy anyway. But anyway, it was not. Yeah, it obviously was not whatever he said. He didn't was. run faster than <laughs> Olympic sprinters. I can yeah. promise you that. Oh, we're the best football athletes. <laughs> I'm sure we, I'm sure we talked about that, but that's like just one of those things. Like li when little kids don't understand, yeah. like when they <laughs> don't understand humility and stuff, mm -hmm. and they like they want to think that they're super fast. Yep, and it's like being fast is one of those little kid things. Yeah, tell you how it's, fast they. Yeah, are. Flash and Superman <laughs> yeah. and all those people. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, that's so funny. Oh, I man. ran by everybody. You know how fast I am. Hey. That's awesome, bro. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Luke is not fast and he still beats everybody <laughs> down the court. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man. Okay. Well, excuse me. Uh, we have a comedy special and a Mount Rushmore to pick for next week. Let me ask you a question. Please do. There's one player in the top 15. I just heard this today. And I, when I said Luca brought it into my mind, there's one player left. In the playoffs right now, that is in the top 15 in uh, yearly salary in the NBA. Take a guess on who it is. Rudy Gobert. You already heard this, didn't you? Yep. You suck. He's like 13th. <laughs> yeah. There's the weird not, people yeah, above him. Not, like, yes. Gobert's not the guy you would go with. Right. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Hey, I thought that was really. Three-time defense player of the year. Whatever. Yeah. 
Yeah, good for you. You could teach your kids how to be tall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be great? He's gonna be a Hall of Famer. That dude's gonna be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yep. He's gonna be a Hall of Famer. Um and he gave uh everybody in the NBA COVID. <laughs> right. He started COVID. So Rudy Gobert started COVID. <laughs> <laughs> touched every microphone oh man still one of they them. were oh, i'm trying to remember who it was somebody on his team was really mad at him because for because he was doing that like in the locker room too and stuff oh, he was like messing around yeah like yeah. often on people and stuff yeah and, yeah and it was like not everybody yeah <laughs> like hey bro some people take this stuff seriously yeah. <laughs> um anyway okay so, so so I'm Rudy Gobert, and you're that guy that was irritated in the locker room. I, who, I can't remember who it was, though, but I was that guy for sure. And I'm definitely Rudy Gobert at the beginning. Like, whatever. Oh, you better get the flu. Okay. Right. <laughs> Got a little cough. <laughs> However many, four million people die or whatever it was. Yeah. 18 million people, whatever it is. Yeah, It's more than that, isn't it? Uh, I think so. Yes. Yeah. I think so. It's still a Yeah. Uh, a lot <laughs> um so real quick pacer celtics we kind of just said the celtics ended up celtics winning, end up winning unbelievable because the pacers were god awful turning the ball over at the end of regulation and uh they they let a huge opportunity slip away i still thought even if the pacers would have won i still would have said celtics in minimum six i'm dude i'm taking the pacers nobody's betting on the pacers you're right miles turner said it nobody's betting on us i'm betting on you That's miles turner i'm gonna right now Pacers are going to beat the Celtics. These are two of my favorite teams in the NBA. Sure. And, but I, I'm a season ticket holder for the Pacers, kind of. Yep. And so I, I kind it, of it's are. hard to partial season ticket holder. Uh, okay. And, partial what? And uh, season ticket holder. Oh, okay. Season, so you're a season <laughs> ticket holder. So, yeah. Sounds good. Um, I, I did get the pre sale opportunity for these, uh, for the Eastern Conference Finals. Absolutely. Um, so I'll take it. Well, that qualifies. Uh, I, but I, I, I figured because I thought, Knicks in five in that series. Sure. And, you know, that was that ended up being an incredible series. I I can't believe I'm saying this, but I feel bad for the Knicks because it's the only team I've hated my whole life. But this this Knicks team is the only team I've the only Knicks team I've been. You like Jalen like Brunson. I love Jalen Brunson. You only like Jalen Brunson or Josh Hart. I, I, I kind of like Josh Hart. I kind of Dante DiVincenzo started getting under my skin a little bit, but here's here's why I started liking this Knicks team. I love Tom Thibodeau. They're a great defensive team because because since he took over, um, some of their other players, n- nobody really bothers me much on their team. I started rooting way, I, no matter what, I was rooting for the Pacers in that series. But I started getting angry every time they played in Madison Square Garden, which is this magical place and everything. Thanks. Stephen A. Smith. Oh, John Starks. Thank you, John Starks. Yeah, I forgot about I, that. I, I mean, I mean, I can't even put into words how much that he bothers me. <laughs> and he he did when I was a kid, and he was at every one of those Knicks games at home, and and this started before the series too. He was at all the Knicks games in the previous series, at all the home games. The man sits on the baseline in the first row and stands up. And walks past the camera people, like you have the row of camera yeah. people, right? And there are even lines, like yep. where the camera people have to be inside that box, right? So that it's so far away from the baseline. Mm-hmm. He's walking past the camera people and walking within this, walking almost all the way up sometimes to the baseline. I'm not exaggerating. I know. Making calls for for the the officials. Talking to the players, the ball goes out of bounds. He's going and chasing after it to get it. He's a Nick. He's a Nick. He's part of the team. Yeah, you know, you know. In nineteen ninety four, you know <laughs> how many other? And by the way, really cool. I love when the players from from the old team, especially in the NBA, because it's harder to do that because everybody plays for different teams. Yep. Right. I mean, all those guys played for other teams too. But Larry Johnson was there every every game. Latrell Sprewell was there at every game. The, the guys that played for the Knicks for a while, the that was the last time they were good too. Yep. By the way, those teams, <clears throat> they were they were all there, and I love that. And then at the Pacers games, I was the I so I was talking to this this Knicks fan that I was friends with for a little bit. Um and and uh she went to the game to to game four of that series, and I was there. We were both there separately. Yeah. And uh so they're showing so that's the big thing in LA and New York, 
on TV. Oh, They're yeah, going to show you all the celebrities, there, right? Yep. So <laughs> at the Pacers game, Derek McKee, <laughs> Dale <laughs> Davis. <laughs> yeah. But but you know what? That's that's real folk knowing what's going on, right? Though I yeah, bet yeah. that crowd was going nuts. Yeah. Because in Indy, was... those are all well known. Like those are celebrities in Indy. And I loved those teams, those those yeah. Pacers teams back then too. And so I sent her. They showed them on the on the screen. Uh, they showed Derek McKee and Dale Davis sitting next to each other. And I and I put uh like Derek McKee and Dale Davis greater than sign John Starks and uh, Lotrell Sprewell or yeah, whoever. Yeah. And uh and she laughed at that. But anyway, um I mean John I mean I mean John Starks maybe I don't understand why they were allowing him to behave the way he was behaving. Because people like you were probably getting irritated all over the place, and that means that they're still watching. And that means that they I, I almost turned it off because of that. You what? You almost. But I I I I I was it's watching Stephen it. A. Smith. Why is Stephen A. Smith being shown doing a uh yeah. on ESPN? Like, He's, why is he before the game starts? Why is he screaming his Nick fandom into the microphone? Why is he screaming at the top of his lungs, either at the game or in studio? As a professional broadcaster, Dan Patrick was so annoyed with that. Dan Patrick <laughs> talks all the time about how uh, when he got to ESPN, he stopped rooting for all teams, stopped rooting for all teams. He just became fan of sport and went out that way. If he was calling a game or doing highlights or whatever, it was he was in it for everybody. And he's like, I stopped being a fan. I stopped rooting, not being a fan. I stopped rooting for teams. Mm -hmm. And he thought he was talking about how he thought the way that they handled that ESPN in general was ridiculous. Here's the thing. I don't mind if you, you grew up a, a fan of specific teams. Everybody I don't mind is. if that's still Mike Wilbon does a good job. He was, he's a big Chicago, huge Chicago. Fan, yeah. But he's not screaming it. And he's not like, you know, my, my bears are going to kill you. Like he's not mm -hmm. behaving that way. Mm -hmm. He's a professional. Yeah. Dude. Behave that way, like well, Stephen I, A. is an entertainer. That's what he is. He's not a journalist. He's not entertaining. He's not, he's, but that's what he thinks he is. That's I what know. they sign him for. That's he is. He's, he's the highest paid person at ESPN for a long time now, and I don't understand why. I don't understand why. There are so many people more talented than him. There, there are people that are better just takes, as good. Better, better takes. takes nothing he says. Nothing he says ever happens. Is that right? Nothing <laughs> he says ever happens. Unless he's talking about Dallas losing or something. Then, yes, okay, Dallas will lose sometimes. But it's like, he'll be like, they are going to be the greatest team to ever want. And, it, and it's like, well, they came in fourth in their division yeah. or something. Oh, man. Uh, that's tough. Yeah, that really – and I'm sure it was because it was the Knicks, too, and I just have this deep-seated uh, thing for the Knicks that I just mm -hmm. don't like. goes back to Reggie Miller. Yeah. And Michael too. I it, there was you know the the Knicks were rough housing with them in the nineties. Um, but and John Starks was at the heart of it, man. John Starks may have well has been have been on the bad boys Pistons teams because that's. I mean, Charles Oakley was just as bad as John Starks. Back absolutely, then. yeah, yep, um, yeah. I didn't like him. Didn't like Anthony Mason. Didn't even like Patrick Ewing. Patrick Ewing wasn't as bad as those guys as far as like getting into fights and stuff all the time. But, um, and he was a, an actual star player. Yes. Um, but I, I don't know. It was just like when John Starks, every time they were down at the, at that end of the floor, anything happened, he's standing up. That's the other thing too. Some of the celebrities in those first rows, why did they get to stand up? The You're whole not time? supposed to. You're it's a, you get a little card. Like I've sat on the, on the floor at Xavier games and you get, there's a little card on every seat. And it's very that. specific. Do not stand up. It, here's the thing. I don't care about the rule. I do care about the rule. But even if it doesn't say that as a rule, hey, there's people yeah. behind you trying to see too. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked about that so many times. I, I just just be a just be a normal, considerate person. Yeah, but I mean, if there's a big three or big dunk, I'm jumping up, hooting and hollering I just at the second, and I, I get back down. But I like the. <laughs> I get excited, man. That's what. Yeah. That's why we're fanatics. Well, yeah, that's we're, what we're, fan is short for. Okay, <laughs> we'll just end up saying because we were we're already saying the same things we've said in this argument before. Yeah, so we won't we won't do that. But 
<laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I just have some consideration for the people we're also trying to see. Yeah, and and you don't. I and, do. And also, and you, I do. I'm not, talk, I I'm, not do. Talking, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the to the people in those in those really expensive seats. That's fine because you can afford those seats. By the way, doesn't make you a bigger fan than anybody else. But you're on the floor. Players and officials can hear you. All right, unlike everybody three rows back mm -hmm. and everybody else in the rest of the arena, you can't hear them, but you're right there. You're not going to change a call. You're not going to get your, I mean, you might actually, you might get in a, an opposing player's head. Uh, there are players you see all the time, trash talking fans because they're being trash talked. Absolutely. Um, but don't, <laughs> don't be with your toes on the sideline of the baseline. You, you can't, I, I just don't understand why that would be allowed, whether you're a former player, whether you're a celebrity, a rich person. I just, I mean, hold them to the same standard, please, as everybody else. And if you're that person, hold yourself to that standard, huh? I love it. I love it, Adam. Uh, I love it. I love it when you get all get I, all get off my lawn on it's, me. I, I feel like it's been a grumpy. I don't feel grumpy. It's been a, I've it's been a grumpy podcast for me. I don't know why. I don't feel I don't feel that way. It's just well, I'm glad to know you don't feel that way because I feel like you've been upset with me since it started. <laughs> not, I thought not, I had a funny story not. and I'm making fun of guys and you just don't like when I make fun of people. You do not like it. <laughs> you don't like it. It was great. No, and then I started telling you that I was giving them hell and all that, and you're like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you never know. Yeah, I mean, one time I I forgot I had tickets, but I just forgot I had them. I didn't, you know, I actually had them still. Well, when you say when you say I get a little too, I had a few drinks. I mean, I get a little too. Oh no 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 no! Whoa 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 whoa! whoa. I never said I get a few drinks in me, and I get did? no, I did not, because I didn't have anything to drink by the when I first started getting mouthy with them. God, you said something. Uh -uh. I said that I let that the guys in my truck all did, but I said. I tend to get a little mouthy. I can get a little mouthy. Okay. I had nothing to do with me having, I didn't have any cocktails till we got inside. Of yeah. That's yeah. Like later in the day. No. Yeah. I know the, 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 you picked the guys up at seven and they were, they had, drinks. yeah, that's different. Yeah. I thought you were talking about later when you guys had been there all day and then you guys met up oh, no. with them. I was, when I first said that I was talking about when we, when, when I, when I found that I could get tickets, yeah, like I was ready to go. I was, and I, and I can, I can, I can, I can tend to get a little, little mouthy. Okay. But no, no I, on the I, way back. I thought you said that about it. Oh, I, it was the basically day. the whole time I was, I was ready to okay. be, I'm, it, I don't need a couple cocktails in me to be mouthy. There's <laughs> zero chance about that. I can be just as big an asshole to you. If you are that that kind of a uh, little fond of yourself, think really highly Absolutely. of yourself person, I'm, I'm going to be that way with you, whether I've had a cocktail or not. <laughs> that does not bother me at all. In fact, it's probably better when I don't because they're a little quicker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get that. Yeah. I no, so. but I, I no, I'm, yeah. I'm not. I'm really not. I mean, John Starks really makes me upset. John Starks makes, upset. makes you upset. It makes me upset that he was doing that and that they were just letting him. Mm -hmm. um, but really, other than that, whatever. I mean, sure. everything else is okay. I'm fine. I, Cat Williams didn't bother you. No, actually, he didn't. You had a two point seven. I was really I mean, impressed. I mean, I'm, I was very generous. Yeah, I thought you were. <laughs> yeah. So you may think you were grumpy, but I feel like. I feel like I just talked about a lot of things that bother me, but I, they're not, they're not it's just, you listen, know, that's what we're here for. They let's, bother let's, me, talk, let's talk about things that bother you. I'm not like angry about it. No, no, they just bother me. You know, why in God's name do I have to make a decision on if I want a stupid car wash or not? It's not, it's not. Let's even, go. What else do we have? What else was this? <laughs> that's just crazy to me. I, I just don't understand. Why do I have to do that? I'm not, I'm not really mad about, I'm, I'm just like, that doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. No. I, can I order donuts at the yeah. gas pump? I, I'll do that. I mean, wouldn't put time out. Why is there not an order at the gas pump thing? Like a lot of people sit there, they pump their gas and they could put an order in for like, like groceries or something. Well, no. I mean, like you go to a sheets. Like if you go to a sheets, they have like food and everything. Like you, mm -hmm. you pump your gas, you go inside, you can 
punch on this little Bucky's or, or Bucky's, any of that. Mm-hmm. You just go in. So you're getting your gas. You plug in what you want. You get done getting your gas. You walk in. You go, hey, number 36, boom, it's sitting there waiting for you. That's a great idea. That should be done. There's no reason that I can't do that. Thank you to whoever started the Mike's Car Wash thing. Thank you for making us make that choice because that can't, generated the idea. The billion-dollar idea that I'll never take advantage of. Hey. Well, some people have uh, a lot of red tape to go through to get all that done. Some people have gumption and, and like a drive. drive. Sure. And then – and then there's Chris. Well, I'm right there with you, pal. <laughs> I'm good. right there with you. Sounds good. Um, <clears throat> okay, so you have to pick oh, a comedy for next week. We have four picks. Uh, we already kind of started it. Uh, you're picking the Pacers over the Celtics. Is that right? I'm taking Pacers. Yes. Uh, uh Minnesota Timberwolves, Dallas Mavericks. Uh, I'm taking Dallas. Dallas, Dallas. In how many games? I'll tell you, Dallas in seven. Dallas and seven. I'm gonna go uh, Celtics in. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Pacers and six. I'm gonna say Celtics and six. I'm, wow, Pacers. In, I'm gonna say Celtics and six. I'm gonna say uh, Minnesota in six. I like it. I like it. Yeah. All right. Um. All right. So now, Mount Rushmore and comedy for next week. Okay. You have Mount Rushmore. I have comedy. Yep. Um. I have a comedy. Okay. Uh, would you like to go first or would you like me to talk about this gentleman? No, go ahead. Talk about it. Uh, you did a beautiful job of foreshadowing in this podcast. I love that. Because, and we we end up doing that a lot, I feel like. Uh, Colin Quinn just has a, has a new special. Did, does he really? Yes. I didn't even know yes. it. What's it on? It's on YouTube. Oh, imagine that. Cool. On YouTube. I love it. Uh, our time is up. Oh, our time is up. He's getting yeah, old. Sounds... He's getting old. Man. His time is getting up. There. His time is getting up. I mean, we're all dying. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think he's in his late fifties, I want to say. Um yeah. And he's there's a it's like a like that there's like a generation that of of guys around his age, and then there's like the next generation down, I feel like is like kind of the um, you know, the guys like we talk about a lot, the Sam Rills, yep. the Normans and Lists and yep. Jays and all that. Um and then there's like the next one that's like uh, like younger people yep. that are up and coming now, right? Um so yeah, so Colin Quinn is in that in that generation that's getting up there and uh we're we're starting to see less of some of these guys and mm-hmm. some of these gals and as a matter of fact, do you know Lisa Lampanelli doesn't do comedy at all anymore? Really? I didn't know. She's like a motivational speaker now or something. Good for her. Yeah. She lost a bunch of weight. I, yeah. Good for I, her. I think she does talk about that. Yeah. Um, which is funny because she was like, she doesn't do any like I'm insult sure she's stuff. Still really, I'm sure she's she's still really funny. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure she, she does she that. Does. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the uh, somebody, uh, Kyle Cease is a is a former her, really good comedy. That, her that last thing. roast, I remember her saying something to the effect of, "I really don't like doing this." Yep, I remember but, that. Like, you know, it almost felt like she was kind of out there going, "Listen, I know how good I am at this, but." It's not, I feel bad. Like, I don't like it. Yeah. Like, kind of a feeling that you got from her. Yeah. Me, on the other hand, if I'm going to come at you because of who you are and what you did for getting my tickets, I don't feel bad <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> Roast away. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, Colin Quinn. We're going we're gonna to check his special out uh, on YouTube. Perfect, Colin Quinn. I'm going to go with the Mount Rushmore of golfers. Oh, yeah. Okay. I am uh, probably going to have a, probably going to have one inspired by Sports Illustrated for Kids circa 1992. Ooh. Payne Stewart? Um, could be. <laughs> could be. That's, uh, isn't that uh, Mike Little's favorite golfer? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, you're going to have a Lee Trevino. You're going to have a uh Ooh. you're going to have um what was the guy that did the uh the sword and stick it in there uh yeah, he was a football uh, too. I can't, um Jack Nicholas might be up there. You know, got yeah. old guys I feel like I'll probably yeah, put on my sure. um well, Ben Hogan action. Ben Hogan. Ben Hogan. Uh, I yeah. knew a guy named Ben Hogan. Yeah. I had a uh um a, a, a neighbor 
named Ben Hogan, and, and he passed unfortunately. But um, huh. uh, so good way to is end he a the good podcast. golfer. I don't. I imagine he didn't golf at all. And if my name was Ben Hogan, I would be like feel like I have to learn how to. Golf. You got to play every day. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Anyway, I, I saw a couple of times recently this, I want to say it was like a pro-am. It was like kind of a fun thing that they were like a celebrity pro-am or something. Um, and Jack Nicholas was playing. And I think there was another, I, it might've been another professional golfer, but he had this like 40 foot putt or something or 35 foot, like real long putt. Yeah. And it was like up a hill and it was slanted or something. And he's, and and the guys like looking at it for a while and they're waiting on him and and Jack Nicholas is like just like yells he's standing on the green he's like he's like yeah all you got to do is you know he's like he's like you don't know how to let me show you let me show you and he goes down makes it and he makes it <laughs> first try yeah uh, you know like just off the top of his head just comes up and makes this super long really tough Ooh. putt in front of a big crowd and all these celebrities and stuff so funny. He's a that, funny. He's a good dude. That dude, that dude's pretty cool. For some reason that came up a couple of yeah. times on TikTok or something. That's like the Tiger Woods stuff. You get catch all these videos of Tiger Woods doing all these crazy things. You see the one where he's on his knees. Out drives the, the, out drives the guy from his knees. Yeah. He's like, still driving contest. Me and you. And the guy's like, Me and you, me and Tiger Woods. Yeah, I'm in. And he because he had just taught him something off the tee and he yeah. shows him how to drive it farther. <laughs> He's, he's jumping even, up. The guy's lining up and he's even, all right, grip it yep. this way. Yep. You know? yep. Don't forget, turn your hands, uh, turn through the ball or something like that. And the dude hits it and he's jumping. He's, yeah. And Tiger's like, all right, longest drive, right? All right. And he gets on his knees and they're all going, no, 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 no. And he just smokes it. And this just happened. This is Tiger Woods with like a, a, a back that he can, he can barely <laughs> walk. And he can, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That Tiger Woods. That's the thing is he's still amazing. It's still amazing. Oh, yeah. So anyway, all right. all right. That sounds good. So we got uh, the Mount Rushmore of golfers, and we have Colin Quinn. Mm -hmm. Our time is up. Right. Until next time, don't forget to turn your headlights on.